my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's, What's the procedure, calm? everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, you calm down! Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing my episode 1 review of Supergirl Season 5. Super excited, Supergirl's finally back. This was a really good episode. We're going to talk about it and a lot more in today's video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any Supergirl videos later this year. Okay, so tonight I will have my trailer breakdown out for episode 2. So that's coming later in the evening, so look out for that. But right now we're going to be reviewing episode 1. We got some new stuff, a lot of new introductions, new characters and new storylines that we have to talk about. I've got a list of stuff we're going to talk about and go through. So really we're going to go through this, you know, chronologically and I'll talk about the stuff that I liked, maybe some stuff that I wasn't so hot on and everything like that and break it down. So Obsidian Tech. This is the new introduction that was massive in this episode and is going to be a big part of at least the first part of the season because we're introduced to this new company which just so happens to be underneath Catco this whole time which we didn't know which is a bit weird and apparently Elon Musk is Andrea Rojas' uncle. That was a bit weird. I was like, ah, that's maybe too on the nose for me but Andrea Rojas comes in and I really liked her. I thought she was really good and she's obviously playing this role that is more villainous. I don't think she's going to be like a full-on villain. I think she's just playing, you know, an opposite side to what James and Kara believe in. And obviously there's a lot of tension with that. I think there's going to be some tension because Kelly actually works for her. So that was a thing in the episode. But if we skip past and talk about Supergirl's new suit, because I really want to talk about it. And the fact that there was actually no explanation for a new haircut in this episode, I think it looks really cool. But I found it a bit weird how they didn't even reference that Kara, say, got a different haircut or, like, hairstyle, but whatever. So she gets a new suit, Brainy gives her this thing, and it's, like, you can't even see it, but essentially put it on, his, on her glasses, and what happens is every time she takes off her glasses, the suit materializes around her, and... Obviously, it's in reference to, like, Iron Man's suit and how it materializes in Infinity War and Endgame. That's definitely the main source of inspiration. So it goes around her, and it comes on, and she shouts, Pants! And her new suit's revealed. It's really cool. She actually does this in front of Lena, which I found to be really suspicious. Like, Lena was super suspicious the whole episode because it starts with her, she's in assimilation, she punches Supergirl like really freaking hard into this bus, and that was a great opening. And then, once Kara actually reveals, we'll talk about that, when she reveals her identity to Lena, what happens is, Lena's really accepting, but you have this sneaking suspicion, and it's revealed by the ending of the episode that yeah, Lena's actually messing with her. Lena is not telling the truth. And when Supergirl gets to visit Lena, she gives her some sort of information. And it's revealed when she's back in her place, she can't forgive her. And it's because she's a Luther, essentially. So that was a big revelation towards the end of the episode. And so she goes back into the simulation and she's pretending to punch Supergirl in this virtual reality. So... Wow, I'm really, really impressed with how they dealt with Supergirl and Lena's story this episode. And so, now let's move on to talk about the big revelation. The big revelation in this episode is that Kara is Supergirl. She literally walks up to Lena at her Pulitzer Prize award ceremony, and she goes, I'm Supergirl, just straight up. And then she starts breaking down, she's crying. Lena says nothing and just walks away. But the revelation, I thought, was done in a really well way, like a really good way, and... It presents Lena as, you know, kind of passive. You can see her emotions, but then, you know, later it's revealed, oh, she's thinking this way, but Kara thinks she's thinking another way. And so Lena actually presents Kara with the Pulitzer Prize. And so Kara gets that prize, is really good. I love the fact that she got it, but I still have a weird problem with them actually giving it to her because it just seems way too easy that she got it. Like, it's a massive deal. And I don't think they were making as big of a deal as it would be in real life. So yeah. 
Let's talk about some other stuff in this episode. We start off with this little kid, and this kid literally, like, fucking transforms this dead dinosaur, this skeleton of a dinosaur, into a real dinosaur. Supergirl fights it. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's nothing too special. The CGI obviously isn't that good, but, you know, it's the CW. They can't afford to do, you know, Avengers-level CGI or anything. And so... The only problem that I have with this scene is Kate Micucci, or however you say her name. She was in the episode for like, I don't know, like four shots, and they were all really bad. I did not like it at all. But whatever, that's just like one gripe. I really like this episode. And so Lena, Kelly, and and Andrea Rojas, and so they're all together. And by the way, I can't say her name properly because I don't... I can't do Spanish names, so I'm just saying Road Justice is just easier for me. I can't say it how she said it, but if you guys can say it, please say it, but I can't. I'm really shit at pronouncing stuff. Um, so they're all together and it's revealed that they're old friends, that Andrea and Lena are old friends and they had a relationship. Don't know if it was intimate or not, I would get the impression it was more um, sort of business wise and you know that they knew each other in the past and so she reveals to her yeah, I'm going to send you this information, bang on 9, and I believe 9 is when the Pulitzer Prize was being given out, or maybe just before it. And so, that was a big revelation towards the start. We sort of got the idea that maybe she would do that sometime in this episode. And so, then we get all the stuff with Midnight against Supergirl. Midnight really was a tiny part of this episode. Like, I'm talking really small. Like, she popped up, like, twice and didn't do much like her powers look cool and stuff like that like there wasn't really much of a fight scene to be honest and the fight scene was like pretty good but it wasn't anything too special but it was cool that they incorporated the phantom zone you know supergirl had to go up there to save jean and that was a cool scene it looked very nice and yeah so midnight nothing too special but pretty good for the limited amount of time she was in so moving over to Catco, we had the introduction of William Day from the Times of London. Kara is a fan of his writing and when he turns up, he's a bit of a prick. He is a prick and so is Andrea really because they're going for this idea of, you know, driving the site or their magazine via revenue. So essentially clickbaiting, no real news and they're just doing this to be a company that makes money essentially. and. So everyone fundamentally disagrees with them, especially James and also Kara, who fights back. And James a ends up actually quitting the job towards the end of the episode. And I think this is going to lead into how Makar Brooks is going to leave the show because he's leaving if you didn't know already. And so she essentially traps everyone there into a three year contract. And if they don't do that and if they quit because of their new ideas, they will actually be discredited and they won't be able to do another journalistic job and so that's what James gives up towards the end of the episode so she's sort of a villain she's definitely presented as a villain and so yeah William Day I don't think he's actually like gonna be that bad of a person I think he'll be fine but I think he's playing under what Andrea wants to do as he sort of similarly said in the episode also Malafaic was the little girl that I was talking about and so he released Midnight to, to attack Jean because he actually knew that she had a beef with Sean and, you know, Malafaic wants to get back at Sean. And we have the big revelation towards the end of the episode as he shapeshifts into his normal self. And Sean doesn't remember that he has a brother, but Malafaic does. And I think this is due to, you know, all the trauma that was caused in the past. And also probably a mix of, like, someone using their mind control shit on him. So he can't remember that he had a brother. And so he's revealed... And that's going to be a heavy focus in the next few episodes. So I'm really looking forward to that. I thought that was very intriguing and how he was sort of everywhere. You just saw the girl every now and again and it was really good. And so this is all linked to the monitor and crisis as well. And so then we move on. And just before we end this video, we want to talk a bit about like Brainy and Nia and some of the relationships. Brainy and Nia have this big moment in the episode. I really, really like them together. Also, I'm really, really happy with Kelly and Alex. I love their stuff this episode. It was so great. Super excited to see all that. And so, yeah, that is about it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to come back tonight. 
to watch my trailer breakdown for episode 2. The Flash comes back on Tuesday, so we're going to have lots of videos every single week like we normally do. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.